Hey guys, my name is Shivam Kejriwal and today I have the Le Ecouleur 2 with me once again and in this video we will be taking a look at the camera performance of this device. For that we will examine some of the snaps that I took with this device and also take a look at some video recordings which would help us decide whether this device sports a decent camera or not. So without any further ado, let's get started and talk about the Lure 2. First of all, let's talk about some basic specifications. The Le Echo Le 2 has a 16 megapixel rear facing camera with dual tone dual LED flash. It is PDAF compatible and can record videos in slow motion as well as in 4K. On the front, we have an 8 megapixel sensor which I highly doubt can record full HD videos though. Now let us talk about the UI of the system camera application. At the first glance, no one would be able to say that this isn't an iOS camera UI because Le Echo has duplicated its camera app a lot when compared to iOS. I'm not really a big fan of this but cannot actually do anything about it in the same place. Anyways, in the regular photo settings, you can see some pretty basic configuration options and toggles like saturation, contrast, sharpness adjustments, etc. And also you can toggle between different resolutions. We also get some inbuilt filters for the photos, but I barely use any of them. The SGR mode is also present and does a decent job in highlighting the shadowed areas both indoors and outdoors. Outsides where we have ample amount of light, I would say that the Loi Cooler 2 does a pretty decent job. Colors are to the point and nothing gets overexposed or under exposed for that matter. It does over sharpen the images though which is an issue which can be fixed by tweaking some software processing. Fortunately Le Echo provides sharpness configuration option in build. But the main issue stands when we talk about indoor lighting. The pictures come out to be a bit too noisy and the camera loses a high amount of detail. Anyways the indoor shots are taken with just one LED bulb on so you can decide for yourself. Now talking about the front facing camera, I would say that the 8 megapixel sensor does its job pretty well. It adjusts exposure according to the tap focus system and makes sure that the priority object gets highlighted. This might even be taken as a flaw by many because it overexposes the background but for me it is pretty good because we don't have any compromises with the main priority object. Now let us talk about the video section and as I already told the device is capable of recording videos in full HD, HD and 4K. Here I would say that the video quality is just above average and not something really very nice. One very annoying thing about the video recordings though is the fact that it doesn't autofocus within the recordings. We have to manually tap to focus which is a thing that can get really annoying at certain times. Overall the video quality both outdoors and indoors seems to be quite okay. The device is also capable of recording slow motion videos at 60fps and I would say that while it isn't even close to good slow motion captures, it definitely isn't as bad as the Redmi Note 3 where we got pathetic result for the slow motion recordings at least. The audio though doesn't get recorded with the slow motion video which again is disappointing. Overall the Leica Le 2 packs in a decent camera at both the front and the back but does struggle a bit in low lighting conditions. On the scale of 1 to 10 I would rate the camera somewhere around 8 which can further be improved by the company's efforts. Overall, if you are looking for a good budget smartphone with a decent camera, I would love to recommend the Leica Echo Le 2 over the Redmi Note 3 any day. Well, that is it for this video. The final review of this device is coming soon, so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel to not miss it. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.